Make.com in the news for good reasons. Notion and N8N in the news for not so good reasons. AI hardware, the new no-code platform, and local desktop AI agents. A couple of them in the news today. So thanks for joining me for week two, 2026 of the no-code news. Thank you. All right, the first article is make.com named top AI automation platform. Hacker Noon, not Hacker News has a great list of no-code platforms that they did a review of. It's really a good read. Give it a check. Make made it to the top and for some good reasons. And they do pros and cons on a lot of tools. So it's a good read. So check that one out. And it's just a reminder, there's so many options out there. And speaking of options, the next article is about Zapier expands their AI capabilities with perceptive panda acquisition. And again, they were a sponsor, or still are. This is a purchase of a company. And it's interesting, the technology, I don't really understand the business side of it. It's a lot about customer research and surveys. But it's just interesting to see companies now like Zapier, and I'm sure Mate does it in others, where they're acquiring businesses that focus on this type of AI processing. One interesting thing about the article, too, is the term orchestration strategy. It's just interesting. I think 2026, I think the buzzword is going to be potentially orchestration or a keyword, not a buzzword. As we learn to orchestrate more because we're going to be juggling more agents or processes or tasks as we automate or allow these agents to run longer to do the jobs. So you could have multiple agents running to do these type of research work. You could have them doing code in other stuff. It would be interesting to see, but I think orchestration in tooling to help us orchestrate better is going to be really important for 2026. N8N in the news again, 2.0 getting updates that are nice. I used it last week finally, and I did the fact that I didn't have to save and mess up a production system. I could save, but not publish. It was really nice. I know they're late to the game. Yes, I know. But on that note, there is a vulnerability. So just make sure to patch your N8N. If it's self-hosted, just keep it up to date. All right, we're going to jump into a quick ad for me. So just give it one minute and then we'll be back to the news. Thank you. 2026 is almost here and I want to show you four tracks that I'm going to be focusing on 2026. And by the end of that year, I just want you to get a sense of like how much you're going to learn, how to have a self-hosted Linux box with all the AI, all the automations and no code we talk about all the time, but you're going to have your own. And at this point, you could put this in your customer's office. So they have private LLMs. We'll do live trainings and you'll see in this timeline, all the topics we're going to really cover here. So honestly, by the end of this track, by the end of 2026, 26, you're going to just feel really confident doing this type of stuff. And it's not that hard. It just takes time learning and doing. The second track is just how do you build? And this one's going to adapt over the year, but by the end of the year, you're going to know how to build UIs and backends. You're going to really learn how to use Superbase as your core foundational backend for storage, for events. Events is going to be key to this. For WebSockets and more, you're going to use Active Pieces, N8N, whichever one works for us to then build solid solutions for customers, for businesses, for your office, whatever. By the end of that track, you're just going to understand how to build, not just with AI, but with no code tools. And then of course, during the week, I'm just going to keep an eye on what's trending and what's interesting to me. And I'll cover those topics as well. I have some ideas here, Kestra versus N8N, agents and active pieces, mail pit, and how you can use that for testing your agents outbox. So these are four tracks, 2026. It's going to actually start next month. But if you join, you'll be in, you'll do the live lessons with me, you'll get more support, and you'll help support the channel. All right, I hope this excites you. I hope you can see all the opportunity here for you to just learn and get comfortable with Linux, with building, with hosting your own AI, with no code tools, and solving problems for yourself and for customers. Looking forward to 2026. Thank you. All right, the next article is Notion AI data exfiltration. Again, we just talked about N8N having a problem. Notion had a problem. And this is just going to happen. This has happened since we've done anything on the net. So now the new, the new place to do things is hidden prompts and other things to get the AI to do things it wasn't supposed to do. In this case, someone was using it to get data out of the system by hiding prompts as white text inside of other white background. But the point is prompt injection and this stuff is going on. And when you're building your systems, keep a lookout for this. You can have guardrails and other type of prompts to help prevent it, but it's really hard. So yeah, everybody has their problems. 
for Notion. They had theirs and 8N has theirs. All right, some of the big news this week was Tailwind not doing well. I like how everybody says they lost 75% of their staff, but they let off three of the four people, if I remember right. It's a bummer, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. This is potentially more than just theft of content, but more the industry is changing. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I'll write about this more later, but I do remember being starting my career as a PC fixer builder. And within a year or two with USB, Windows 95, and laptops, they needed me less. And so we evolve. The idea of Tailwind was amazing, but building a business around something like that might have been tricky the way they did it, or just it might not have a place right now, and it becomes something else. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So Tailwind News, interesting situation there. Flutterflow's AI future in DreamWorks. This is a good video or a good look at this Flutterflow DreamWork and how the company is maybe shifting and leaving behind or not. But the point is, I really like how these companies like Flutterflow or Bubble, they have a good framework for building without code, but you still need the skills to build. And so if they can make AI put the Lego bricks together for you, it's a win-win. So Let's see what goes on here. Dreamflow, I'm definitely going to be doing some videos on that, or at least one, because it does look interesting. And I rather, in many ways, vibe code with something that has blocks to use versus building everything fresh. All right, now for the trending on GitHub in Hugging Face and just overall. Miro Thinker, open source research agent model, again, running locally. You don't have to worry about the cost. You can just let this thing run for hours and hours. Privacy is also a big deal, but the cost in just letting these things run is going to be amazing. As I dig into with customers who have more data, learning manuals, machine data, whatever, just putting the stuff at that, letting it run and learning what you can maybe pull out of that data is just awesome. And then knowing it's not going to cost a fortune if something goes wrong. So that is Miro Thinker. Another one is the LGX2 Efficient audio visual foundation model and uh, it's open source as well. And again, just a reminder that doing video and audio locally is already possible, but it's just progressing and progressing. So imagine now a future where you, if you are a person who wants to make videos because you're, you have great story ideas, you can have your own local box. It's generating the videos for you at no cost besides the box and then editing it. It's going to be pretty cool for creators who didn't have the skill or the budget for the video, but had awesome ideas for it. Coin image is also along those lines of like text to image. And so again, local, run it, get your images out. People use comfy UI, but again, people with ideas of how to write a comic, but they can't do this, the comic itself. They might not have the budget either. So it's not about removing jobs. It's just about putting something out there that someone could not have done before. The fact you can do it local, the fact that you could not spend money on it, in, in it's really neat. I think for creatives and people with ideas like this, sure, people will take advantage of it. But I'm saying for those who really want to just create something they couldn't do before, it's I'm glad to see this. And then there's a Nemotron 3 Nano. This was on X and uh, local LLMs just doing a lot on very little hardware. I have a whole channel on this, a whole series, a whole track. And basically, like these local LLMs can do the job. What is the job is the question. And when you figure out what your job is and what the needs are and you put the models and the problems in place, they will do it. So this is great. This is one more option that can run on low-end hardware. So who knows? 2026 will be interesting as these models start running on other things in our office, in our work. it would be interesting to see where this stuff goes. On that note, Julie and Tars Agentic Desktop. So these are two different news items or trending GitHub. Both of them, no, one of them is from ByteDance. And the goal here, or the thinking here, is that these tools can take over your desktop and get work done, bringing together all the different applications. So I make a video, I do this, and then I have to go edit it. And then I got to go market it in three or four places. I got to make thumbnails for it. That's a lot of work that if I could just say, go do it and train it on that, that's pretty amazing. And train my local LLM so that... I don't have to spend money on it. It's going to be interesting because they need to make money. So we'll see how that goes as well. Speaking of making money like Tailwind. So yeah, these two Agenta desktops are local on GitHub. Pull them down and run them. It's an interesting direction. All right. The next section is controversial because why is it here? AI hardware news. But I want to talk about this because when we build things, we have a platform 
for no code. We, we've been building things. I've been building things for eons on the web or whatever. But in the end, what is the platform that businesses need to be on to, to make money, to make their business work and to sell products? And we're getting more into hardware where we're going to be wearing things like glasses and pendants and earphones and wrist stuff that then becomes the mechanism or the platform for these applications. And so when I put on my glasses I don't have with the meta, then the display could show something that I built as an application for them. So I think for me, this is really about shifting, thinking about the web as the only place we build for, but being this hardware. So I think this is really important and interesting to me. And so on that note, Plod now has a new pin or updates to their pin. And it's not just that thing on your phone anymore. It's not just a web app, but you can actually wear it. And I think these wearables like Plod and the next one I'll talk about are going to just keep going as they have cameras and other stuff. So motor rollers entering the wearable game as well with something like this Plod, but this one has a camera. And unlike Humane, I think they're coming at this at a little bit more of a approachable, humble level. And I think if they come in at this level, they can produce something that can work, that can last, that is practical enough that it's a platform that could be worth thinking about as you think about future builds and future ideas. Will I get one? I would love to get one to review. I just want to start reviewing AI hardware this year. But it is interesting. I work from home. I could have it on. I could have it help me remembering what I'm like, what I've done, what hours I worked for a customer, or what I'm doing here so I can bring it all together end of the day notes or during the day notes as I go. The last one is really interesting. I didn't think about this until they put it out there. And you're like, yeah, this makes a ton of sense. So Razer with their gaming laptops is making big overhead earphones with the cameras and everything. So you can really see how when I wear this out, no, not only when you're playing a game and you need help, but again, at work and just working on things and you have the AI there to help you maybe do a better shot or get information. It's going to be interesting. I don't have any answers here, but I do know this is very fascinating to watch these ideas come out. I do stuff now on my computer with Gemini and other tools, but what if I had this on and it was taking all that in as well? I just don't, there's no answer and I don't think there's any one solution right now. But these are exciting ideas, and I'm really glad to see them. CES is all is going on. I think it just ended. And uh, so these are some of the products that came out of that as well. All right, that's the news. It, it's interesting. I hope the AI hardware one people like. That's one of my favorite topics. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. And remember, the ad was for me and for the project I'm working on where you can learn how to build on-prem systems for your office, your business. So please join to support the channel. I'll have other ways to support as well, like Patreon, but I'm just doing it that way right now. All right, thank you, and I hope you enjoy it.